Welcome. Welcome. Hi. Thank you. Yeah, High Gold has um, two projects, I think, in Alaska and in Timmins. Timmins. And we got Timmins Gold Camp. So please go on. Well, thank you. Um, yeah, we're, we're high gold mining. We're, we're focused on high grade gold in, in North America, specifically Alaska and Timmins. Uh, you know, we take the philosophy that, um, you know, we're explorers to go out and find the next big deposit. And, and we think there's a premium paid for premium assets and premium jurisdictions. So that is our focus, looking for the best deposits in the best places. Um, and we're off to a pretty good start. We've generated some of the industry's best drill intersections uh, of late. We're well financed. We've got a, a great shareholder roster. Um, you know, we've got a, a management that knows how to operate in the jurisdictions where we are uh, and uh, have, have discoveries to our names. And uh, we've got a very focused business plan um, to, to create value for, uh, for our shareholders. Capital structure um, here for you. So relatively tight, 73 million shares issued and outstanding. Um, we've got just under 20 million cash in the till right now. Market cap is uh, 60 million Canadian uh, at a bit of a discount now, uh, as are many explorers. Um, Well-balanced shareholder roster here, uh, some blue chip North American institutions, uh, some familiar high net worth uh, mining names there, Rob McEwen and others. Uh, the senior gold producer here is Agnico Eagle. Uh, they've put in a placement um, based on our Alaska project and they've been topping up as they go along. They've got an investor rights agreement that allows them to maintain a 9.9% interest. Currently have uh, research coverage by uh, two analysts, Brock Coulter, John with Cormark, and Stephen Souk with, uh, with Stiefel. Here's where we are. Uh, you know, Johnson Tract in Alaska is uh, very accessible. We're, we're right on the coast in Cook Inlet, not too far from Anchorage, uh, which is the capital city. We've, we've got a resource established there, uh, all in about 880,000 ounces gold equivalent at about 10 grams per ton gold equivalent. So high grade. And as I'll walk you through, what really differentiates this, though, is not just the grade, it's the thickness that we, we, we see with this deposit. That was generated in the spring of 2020. We've drilled 27,000 meters uh, since then, and we'll have an updated resource uh, before the end of June uh, to the market. In Ontario, uh, in the Timmins camp, we've assembled a very large land position in what is Canada's top gold mining jurisdiction. It's really been sort of nucleated or centered off of the Croesus mine, which is a former past producer that produced some just spectacular uh, uh, specimens. So when we talk about high grade, uh, you know, just to put it into context or compare it with other, other companies out there, OPAX, they're an Australian sort of just, uh, mining database company, and they've compiled public disclosure of uh, explorers uh, across the, uh, throughout the world, really. And so last year, we made a, a sort of a new high grade discovery, over 500 grams per ton gold, over 6.4 meters. Uh, with nice silver and, and, and base metal credits. So that came in number three on that list uh, of top drill holes for 2021. But we've been on it. You know, in the past, uh, 107 meters of 12 and a half grams gold and 7% zinc, it, it, it's been able to produce some just spectacular drill results. Um, and what's most meaningful for me is these big long ones that we had that were on the list the last two years or the previous two years uh, are from our main deposit. The one that made the top of the list this year is from four kilometers away at a new prospect, at our first time drilling that new prospect. So it bodes well for the exploration upside on the property. So our plan, you know, we think we have the makings of an ideal mineral deposit. What I mean by that, it has grade and thickness that translates to attractive mineability uh, and economics. Um, well, we don't have an economic study yet. It's pretty easy to see that this is something that should be attractive uh, from a mining standpoint. It would be small footprint, underground type of operation. And we're actually leasing the property from a Alaska native corporation, which ensures you've got sort of social license from the indigenous population on the front end. Uh, it's really attractive from a permitting standpoint and political buy-in. We also like the fact that there's uh, strategic energy metals as co-products here. About 50% of the value is gold. The remaining 50% is split between copper, zinc, and a little bit of lead and silver. Um, and obviously being in a Tier one jurisdiction, stable jurisdiction is, a, is an asset. So our focus here is right now has been building value with the drill bit. That's growing the main re resource itself. 
and, and really demonstrating that there's opportunity here for other deposits on the property and we're off to a very good start. Um, and I'll walk you through those. Um, we're also transitioning a little bit to early developer status. Uh, you know, we want to look ahead to reduce timelines and de-risk the project, whether that's sort of roads, permitting, those, those sort of items. Um, so we're getting a head start on some of that environmental work, but very much driven, value driven at the moment by the drill bit and what we can create there. So conceptually, uh, you know, being able to develop a mine here, you know, as I say, we don't have a PEA or mine plan in place, but it's not hard to, to envision how you would mine this. You'd put a, an adit in the side of the valley, uh, the valley floor, and you'd drift in laterally uh, to the deposit, and then you'd mine your way up. There's a lot of advantages to that. One, it's lower upfront capital, capital to build your mine and get yourself started. Two, uh, gravity is going to do a lot of the work for you when you, when you start mining. It also happens to get you into the, the richest part of the deposit first, um, which would give you a quick payback. So shown here is a long section. The grid on there is a 100 meter grid. Um, so we've, we've basically been able to delineate the deposit from surface to a depth of or down plunge length of about 600 meters. It is open for follow up. The resource that I spoke to that was done in 2020 is that sort of darker shaded color that you can see there. And since then, we've drilled 27,000 meters and stepped out and con continued to grow it. Not hitting quite the same monsters we were in the, in the core of the deposit, these, you know, those 100 meter plus intersections, but still very uh, attractive grades and widths as, we, as we've been stepping out. So looking forward to getting that resource update out. It'll kind of just be a moment in time as we continue to expand and grow, grow the deposit. Now, just looking to the DC area or Difficult Creek, um, this is the area where we had that 500 plus gram per ton uh, uh, intersection over 6.4 meters. This is four kilometers away from our main deposit. It's actually in a very similar sort of geologic setting. And so we have a really nice geological model we've established for the main deposit. Um, part of that model includes a bit of a stratigraphic control to the mineralization where it wants to occur. Um, and it's a certain age and time of rocks. And we're seeing the exact same age and time of rocks where this mineralization is, and we see a lot of potential along trend along that specific unit. Um, and when we track it through the mountain, or when we project it through the mountain, it pops out the other side a kilometer away. We have some very strong surface geochemistry. It's the highest grade soils and rock sample on the property. That includes the soils and rocks we've collected on top of the DC prospect itself, as well as on top of the main deposit. So haven't yet uh, drilled this. It's going to be drilled for the first time, the, the milk bone side of the, of the mountain this year. Um, and we'll be hitting the, the new discovery we made of, of the spectacular grade um, uh, as well as part of our, our plan. So it should be a pretty exciting program. We're, we're kicking, opening up camp mid-June, uh, and we'll have drills turn in from then, likely right on through to September, October. So, you know, we are, uh, we really our value has kind of got, we've got two pillars for value creation. Obviously, Alaska, we're more advanced. We've got a great resource there. We're growing that resource. Um, but we've got a pretty commanding position within the uh, Timmins camp. Uh, you know, there's more gold that's come out of here than anywhere else in Canada. Uh, this belt's about 100, 120 kilometers east-west in terms of the scale here for reference. Um, so these are big property positions in a very mature and established camp. And it's a place that we can work year round. Um, our spend right now is maybe 20, 30% in Ontario and 70, 80 in Alaska. And I'll just zero in on the Creases property here. Um, it was a former past producer. It was small scale, but fabulously high grade uh, mineralization. Um, and we're, we've been targeting more of that. We've got a good geologic model to find more of that. And um, we're having some success. We haven't had the kind of success of the samples you see here, um, but it's early days for us. But we really like the sort of broader potential. What's happened is, what we've done is we've done about 14 separate deals to consolidate the land around us. It was a patchwork of different owners that dated back to the early 1900s. And because it was such a small fragmented network of different ownership, there was very little work done over the last 90 years. And so we've liberated the property for exploration by consolidating it. And at the same time, our neighbors have really put the spotlight on the east end of the Timmins camp. Mineta is 
now has 12 million ounces sitting just down the road from us. Right next door, about 1,500 meters long trend is the Fen Gib deposit. It's 2 million ounces, should be 3 million before long. McEwen Mining's Black Fox mine is on the other side. And all of this is to say, this is pretty good geological real estate in our view. Uh, we know we've got high grade on the property. There's been very limited exploration. So we like the approach of being able to kind of target for brand new things here um, while you know, also having the core value of our Alaskan assets. And this season, we actually just had some results out here just a few weeks ago. We did make a brand new discovery. It was the first documentation of bulk tonnage type gold. You know, collectively, there was over 150 meters of about 150 grams in, in, in one of our first holes there. Very exciting. Um, you know, it's lower grade. It certainly doesn't fit as well with our branding of high gold. Uh, maybe high volume, I don't know, but uh, it's, uh, we'll take it. It's a, it's a nice new discovery. It's very early days. These the intersections are very comparable to the type of grades you're seeing uh, next door by our, uh, by our neighbors. So watch that one as we advanced. Um, so yeah, I mean, uh, Catalyst, going forwards, uh, we've got some metallurgy coming for Johnson Track. Not typically a market mover, but a very important de-risk for the project. It also tees us up, should we want to do an economic study on the back of our new resource? Um, that resource should be out and to the market. Um, as I say, we're saying Q2, we're running out of Q2, so it should be into the market by the end of June. Uh, more assays to come from Ontario uh, with that program we just completed. And... Um, I think the real driver here is going to be when the drills start spinning again in Alaska, which is very soon. Uh, very excited to see what, you know, is going to become of DC with the kind of grades we have there. We got the money to do it. So there's, um, there's any other questions or you want to follow us up or uh, here's the contact details and we're around. Thank you for, uh, for your time. Thank you very much, Tom.